you know that some ancient Egyptian mummies were buried with mysterious amulets and artifacts, believed to hold protective powers or magical properties? They're like mysterious keys to the past, holding secrets we're still trying to understand. Welcome to the land of Egypt, a place filled with wonders and secrets from the past. Here, among the towering pyramids and ancient temples, lie stories of mighty pharaohs and their buried treasures. But behind the beauty of these ancient sites hides a darker side, the world of Tomb Raiders. The mythology of Egypt. Ancient Egypt is like a treasure chest full of stories and legends, each more captivating than the last. Archaeologists must assume that any tomb they excavate has likely been plundered before their arrival because it happened so frequently. The Egyptians believed it was crucial to include items in tombs because they thought the afterlife was just like life on Earth, but without any troubles. Tombs typically contain two types of objects. Those that help the deceased transition to the afterlife, such as items with magical spells like the Book of the Dead or Scarabs, and those intended for use in the afterlife, like food, clothing, and furniture. Some perishable goods, such as food and flowers, were buried, although they were not meant to be reused once underground. However, durable items like furniture and linen could be reused even after coming into contact with dirt. Among the most valuable items found in tombs are metals and semi-precious stones, which were highly prized by both the ancient Egyptians and modern-day tomb raiders. Certainly, precious metals like gold or bronze would be among the first targets for tomb raiders, as they held significant value both in ancient times and today. However, the likelihood of finding such treasures would depend on the social status of the tomb being targeted. It's intriguing to consider that all the objects buried with individuals were essentially wealth taken out of society, only to be interred in the ground. Yet, despite this, tomb robbing was widely viewed as highly immoral and unethical. Most people refrained from engaging in such acts because they understood that stealing from a tomb not only deprived the deceased of their belongings but also disrupted their journey to the afterlife. The ancient Egyptians took the sanctity of tombs very seriously, believing that disturbing the resting place of the dead could have dire consequences for both the deceased and the living. As a result, tomb robbing was generally considered taboo, with only a few individuals daring to defy societal norms for the sake of personal gain. One of the boxes contained a handful of solid gold rings tied up in a fold of cloth. It was the very last thing that a thief would be likely to forget, and we are almost forced to the conclusion that the thieves were either trapped within the tomb or overtaken in their flight. Tomb raiding. In ancient Egypt, stealing from tombs was a big no-no. If you got caught, you'd face harsh punishments. But what scared people even more were the curses believed to follow tomb robbers and their families. Despite the risks, tomb raiding happened a lot, especially towards the end of the New Kingdom. Surprisingly, most tomb robbers weren't poor folks struggling to survive. They were often middle or upper class people with money and connections. Some were even priests or officials who knew where the tombs were. Craftsmen, sailors, and palace workers were also involved getting tips on tomb locations from secret records. Once they stole stuff from tombs, they had to sell it somehow. Egypt had places where stolen goods were sold, keeping the shady business going. So, tomb robbing wasn't just about disrespecting the dead, it also fueled an underground economy driven by greed and opportunity. In ancient Egypt, if you wanted to trade stolen goods without getting caught, you could head to a marketplace far from home where nobody knew you. There, you might be able to sell items like linen or furniture that couldn't be easily identified. For things like metal, you could melt them down and turn them into scrap. But to do this, you'd need skilled craftsmen to help you out. They could wash away markings or alter items to make them unrecognizable, sort of like laundering stolen goods. Tomb raiding often happened shortly after someone was buried. Could happen within hours, days, weeks, or even months or years later. And tombs weren't just robbed once. They were raided multiple times over the years. It's like a slow trickle of items being taken from the tomb over time. There were times in history when tomb raiding was more common, like during times of war or when the government wasn't strong enough to protect tombs. During these times, officials might gather groups of workers to raid tombs and earn money. These periods, known as intermediate periods, are helpful for historians to understand different times in ancient Egypt's history. In ancient Egypt, the strength of the ruling dynasties played a big role in tomb protection. 
when there were powerful kings who ruled with authority, tomb security was better. But during what we call intermediate periods, things changed. Power shifted from the central government to regional areas, making it harder to keep tombs safe. During these times, the rich could become poor and everything felt upside down. But it's important to remember that these stories were mostly written by the elite. From the perspective of everyday people, there might have been some benefits to this shift in power, like a redistribution of wealth. There were different ways to protect tombs, but the most effective way was to have guards in the cemetery. However, this only worked well when the government was strong and the guards were paid properly. Even then, tomb robbing still happened. In fact, during the New Kingdom, there were trials for tomb robbers who were caught. They were publicly killed as a warning to others, but the lure of riches was still strong enough to tempt people into tomb raiding. Tutankhamun's Tomb Tutankhamun's tomb, discovered in 1922 by a man named Howard Carter, is one of the most famous discoveries in history. It was found in a special place called the Valley of the Kings, which is in Egypt. Howard Carter had been looking for this tomb for a long time, and when he finally found it, it was a really exciting moment. Inside the tomb, there were so many amazing things to see. There were chairs, tables, jewelry, and even food and drinks. But the most special thing found in the tomb was the golden mask covering the face of Tutankhamun's mummy. It was made of solid gold and looked very fancy and important. Some people believed there was a curse on the tomb. They thought anyone who disturbed it would have bad things happen to them. Heather. Colleen can decode the ancient confessions of a new kingdom tomb robber named Amenpanefer, who broke into the tomb of a pharaoh named Sobekemsaf II. We took our copper tools and we broke into its very inner chamber. And we know that they're going through the mummies themselves because they talk about a piece of gold jewelry at the neck of the king. Some members of the team who found the tomb did have some bad luck afterward, like getting sick or having accidents. But most experts today think it was just a coincidence, not a real curse. Inside the tomb, they also found the mummy of Tutankhamun. A mummy is a body that has been preserved after someone dies. Tutankhamun's mummy was wrapped up in many layers of cloth and placed inside a series of special coffins. The most impressive coffin was made of solid gold and had beautiful designs on it. The golden mask covering Tutankhamun's face was really something special. It was made to look like the face of a king with a beard and a headdress. It was placed on top of Tutankhamun's mummy to protect him and help him on his journey to the afterlife. Even though some people thought there was a curse on the tomb, the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb was a big deal. It got people all over the world interested in ancient Egypt again. The artifacts found in the tomb, like the golden mask and the furniture, have been shown in museums around the world. Tutankhamun was a young pharaoh who ruled Egypt many years ago. He became king when he was only nine years old. His reign didn't last very long, and he died when he was still a teenager. But his tomb was filled with treasures fit for a king. The discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb was a really important moment in history. It taught us a lot about ancient Egypt and the way people lived thousands of years ago. Even today, people are still fascinated by the mysteries of Tutankhamun's tomb and the treasures it holds. Vanishing Treasures In January 2011, the famous Egyptian museum in Cairo was attacked by rioters, resulting in the destruction of many precious artifacts. Sadly, this was not the only place affected by looting. Across the country, historical sites were left vulnerable due to a lack of supervision after the uprising. With the security forces focused on managing ongoing protests, the protection of these sites was neglected. To combat the threat of grave robbers, the army has deployed armored vehicles near the pyramids in Dasher. However, these measures have not deterred the thieves, who have become increasingly bold. In one instance, guards were forced to take cover when grave robbers opened fire on them with automatic weapons. The gangs are not limiting their activities to Dasher alone. At the pyramids of Saqqara, they even raided a state-owned storehouse, making off with valuable items such as small statues. Illegal excavations have also been reported in tourist hubs like Aswan and Luxor, 
with experts suspecting the involvement of organized crime groups. Some of these criminals have gone so far as to use small excavators instead of traditional tools like shovels. According to Professor Nur el-Din, antiquities theft is a highly lucrative enterprise. He emphasizes the urgent need for the government to prioritize the protection of archaeological sites. With limited resources available for other tasks such as excavation and restoration, safeguarding these sites must take precedence to prevent further loss of invaluable cultural heritage. As we finish discussing the challenges with Egypt's ancient treasures, it's clear we need to act fast to protect them. Let's work together to protect our history. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on this important topic. Thank you for your support.